Good morning. Let's go ahead and start with a word of prayer. Lord God, thank you for your kindness and goodness. Lord, help us to see these things, wondrous things out of the book, and help us to understand them. We ask this in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Now, this is where we left off last week. We saw how the, uh, the Pharisees and the scribes, they were keeping the law outwardly. And that gets you into works. And that can give you satisfaction, this is, and they can make you proud. That's what will happen. But Jesus came and said, it's been said, but I say, and so he gives us the right interpretation. He has several examples of that, and it shows you that the, the Jewish mind said, thou shall not kill, and they would satisfy the fact that I've never killed, so I'm fine. But Jesus says, if you're ever, ever angry with your brother, you've already committed the sin, because that's what leads you to ultimately to murder. So he would tell you, he's dealing with a source, and nobody can keep it. So makes the, he makes keeping the law even more difficult. The Jewish mindset, we, or the Pharisees and the scribes, they, they were satisfied because they were keeping the law, but Jesus says, you're not really keeping it, actually. So it makes, it, it makes keeping the law even more impossible. So the law was never designed for that purpose, to make you proud. It was designed to lead you to the cross. That's what the law is there for. When you see how, how much we fail and we can't keep the law, by faith you're, laid, you're led to the cross. And that's the, right, that's the righteousness. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, and to all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference, Jew or Gentile. So, um, now look at this. We've come so far. We started the, uh, chapter 5 like this. Chapter 5 begins with the Beatitudes. Uh, that, ex- that describes the character. That describes the character. And if you live, and that's really what you are. Uh, if, if you're that, because remember, this is the book of the king. And he says, if my subjects, this is why I, I expected them, because the, Jew, the, the disciples, that's what, that was the beginning of the church. They were all Jews at one time. You know, now it, it, we got a lot of Gentiles in it. But at the beginning, it says, if you live like that, you're going to be persecuted. And, and that's why you're going to be blessed, because it's, you're going to realize that if you're persecuted, you, you're a citizen of heaven. This is not your home. That's what, that's proof that you're a disciple of Jesus. Because if they uh, persecuted the master, they're going to persecute you as well. So that, that makes you salt. You'll be a, that's going to be the, 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 the effect you're going to have on the world, the function. And you're going to be light. You're going to reveal things. And then he gets to the point where he says, I'm going to give you the right interpretation of the law. And that's what we just dealt with just now. Um, the right interpretation, because they did not have the right interpretation. They were just covering the outward part of the law. So Jesus says, if you're going to be my disciple, you need to understand it correctly. And that's what Paul tells us, rightly dividing the word of God. And once you get to that point, we dealt last week with this. Be therefore perfect, even as your father, which is in heaven, is perfect. He gives the sun and the rains to both the just and the unjust. And he wants us to be like that. To treat everybody like that. Um, to love your enemies. Who can do that? Because we said that this is a high standard. This sermon is a very high standard. And I used to think, well, this is for the, this is the kind of uh, law that's going to come into being when the kingdom is set up, the millennial reign, a thousand years. We're going back to the law and the millennial reign. But this is really what's going to be set up at the millennial reign, the Sermon on the Mount. It's a high standard, and nobody can live it except the Christian. 
the, clear, the Christian is the only one that's uh, equipped with the Spirit of God. Okay, now look at this, folks. This is the thesis that I've taken for this study. Psalms 139.7. That's the psalm that says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. But uh, look at this. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? I wanted to take this because this because you're going to find out as, as we ended chapter chapter five, there was a lot of reference. There's a lot made to the fact that your father, your father, your father. Once you're this, he he says oh, you got to keep in mind you have your father. And we're told here that there's no way you can hide from his presence. Look at this in Hebrews. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. So that will bring us to this. We live in his presence. We really do. And we tend to forget that. And that's why a lot of people tend to do their crimes in the night when they think nobody's watching. But the Bible teaches that we are in his presence. And I've heard people say, teach that before, that you got to practice that, that you're in his presence all the time because he's watching you. He watches everything, no matter where you're at. In the dark of your room, in some other city where nobody knows you. Because you get tempted like that. He says, you know, I'm in Detroit. Nobody knows me here. I can do anything I want to do. You know, I was in Detroit in 1985, and I was thinking that. I was walking to Detroit, and I says, nobody knows me here. I'm just a regular Joe here. Because in San Antonio, you never know. You're in Walmart. Hey, Brother Phil. Whoa. You know? But in another place. But this comes around and says, uh, 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 uh. He's always watching us. So that's what we need to be aware of. So we're taking this as a thesis. Whither shall I flee from thy presence? Now look at this, folks. We're about to enter into chapter 6. It's amazing how the Bible is written. I kid you not. I know I've said that so many times. But God, I mean, you got to read the Bible chronologically. I mean, it's fine. You can read the Bible here, here, here. Hop, hop around, you know, that's fine. But when you read it like a novel, it just makes a lot of sense too, you know? Uh, I know I'm covering books, like from here we're going to Leviticus, way back there. But I mean, covering the whole book. But anyway, look at this. We've said this before, we are duality. Once you become a Christian, you, there's two parts of you. You gotta feed, we just fed the physical out there with tacos. And now we're looking into the spiritual. You know, this is the spiritual. So we're a duality. And so now we're going to be getting a warning right at the very beginning of Matthew 6. As in Matthew 6, you got to watch that. As we start the chapter, there's a warning. Because we, now we're in his presence and we have a relationship to the Father. We've seen that. And that's how chapter 6 ends. Be like your father, perfect. And you have a relationship to the world. Both. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. So you need both. You need the necessary bread, and you need the spiritual as well. So you need both. Now he's going to be dealing... Now look at the... First, it's going to cover our religion, our piety. You know, we, we are a religious people. We do deeds of religion. And we also do, uh, and the second aspect is we deal with the mundane. We got to. We got to do, because we live here in this world. Uh, we deal with, we got to wash our clothes and our dishes. I have to every four days, whether I like it or not, because I only have four plates, you know? So <laughs> we got to deal with it. And my clothing piles up and says, oh, again? But that's the way it is. Uh, and I also wonder, where, the, where do the socks go? You know, because they're always missing. The whole pile says, well, that's it. But see, that's the mundane. You got to deal with that. And look at this. We're going to cover first 
the deeds, the deeds that are done, the almsgiving, and also prayer. We're going to cover prayer, and uh, probably maybe we'll just touch upon it, and then uh, fasting. This is all verses 1 through 18, so I know we're not going to cover it. Um, and then the second aspect is deal, deals with the mundane. This, this deals with love, loving the world or the system. And it deals with this um, anxiousness or worry, uneasy or nervousness, care, the cares of the world. And so we got to deal with both sides. And that's why there's a warning at this beginning because he's, he's talking to his disciples and he's going to tell us right at the very beginning, you need to be careful. And it's amazing, folks, how, um, how appropriate that is. Because, I mean, of course, the Lord knows. He knows us through and through. Um, so this is what, now look how it happened. This is how it starts. Uh, a, a, a fundamental truth at the very beginning, a principle. He's going to lay out a principle that applies um, throughout the whole chapter, I believe. He says, take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. He says, look at this. Be careful. Be cautious. That's what that is. Be cautious because we are creatures. We're citizens of heaven. Our destination is heaven. Uh, but while we're here, God says you can accumulate rewards. Um, but it's so easy because we live in a tangible 3D world. We, we, wa we want to impress people. We want to be loved. We want to be liked. And so this can happen. And so he's warning us at the very beginning. Do not, do not your alms before men to be seen of them. <clears throat> We're to be like our father, but our deeds, you know, and how often you get tempted. If, if you're at a red light and there's this guy coming around begging and there's people watching you, you, you want to pull out a dollar bill, you know, to tell people, hey, I'm, not, I'm a pretty good guy, you know, look at what I'm doing. If you're doing that for that, that's about all you'll get, just the looks of satisfaction from the people. But if that's what he's saying. Be careful how you do your, your deeds. If, and otherwise, you have no reward of your Father, which is in heaven. And our Father, I've always known that that's a problem with God. A problem I have with God because I can't see him. And uh, everything I see but him I can't see. He's invisible. And we all have that problem. Because he's a spirit. And, but we know that he's real and he's watching us. And he knows that what two or three are, there he is too. But at the beginning, I pointed that out, how we're all in his, everything is made manifest. We're all in his presence. Okay? So here's something else, reward. And a lot of people, there's a lot of people says, why can't you just be good for, for nothing? Well, yeah, that sounds so good, but really, that's not the way the world works. We are, we're all doing it for something. I mean, you work, you work a week and at the end of the week, that's how you get paid. You don't get paid first and then go to work. It always works the other way around. You work all week or two weeks or a month or whatever, and then you get paid. Who invented that? Duh. But God does that too. He says, you're going to be rewarded. Isn't that fantastic? That's what's coming. We're going to be rewarded for what you did. I mean, whether it was just uh, raising children. I mean, uh, what's, what's, what's that? Uh, uh, the one of the Wesley's, uh, the Wesley's mother, she had 23 kids, was it? Yeah. Or something? I think something like that. <laughs> was it her? I forget. Susanna Wesley. Susanna Wesley, right? She had, I think, good night. I thought 13 kids was a lot. My uncle had 13 kids. And you would go over there. He never had a job. You know, they're all, they were all overweight. And I thought, how does that happen? <laughs> and you would go over there and, uh, 
Oh, Phil, sit down. Good. Have breakfast with us. And it was like a party. Everybody grabbing stuff. You gonna eat that? You gonna eat that? What? Whoa. I don't like it. Gone. You could never talk about saying, what is this? It's gone. You don't question it. You just, when the food is put, put, there, uh, put there before your face, you just dig in and eat it. Because it's gonna be gone if you, just, if you just let it sit there for a little while. 13 kids around that table all the time. And, I, and they were, that's what was amazing. Because people that say, well, you can only afford 1.2 kids, you know. And I said, I don't believe that. Because uh, my uncle is a proof of that. But even for that, I think there's rewards. So there is rewards. Keep that in mind, because God brings that up again. He says, you'll lose rewards if you're doing it for the wrong motive. This is what he's talking about. Motive. Because look what it says here in Proverbs 1, 16, 2. All the ways of man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the spirits. He looks inside, and we're told that. He looks inside the heart. Because look at this. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. <clears throat> That's scary, folks. I tell you what, this, the Sermon on the Mount, it gets deep. God says, I'm watching you, and I know why, why you're doing what you do. Keep that in mind. So this is what this thing, I tell you what, as we get into the sermon more, it just, it's, it, I have never seen it like that, how well God knows us, and he says, <laughs> as a Christian, as one of the, because I am your father, he says, everything is going to be weighed. You're going to be found out whether that thing you did. And I look back at my life, and I know I've taught classes in the flesh. I know. And I'm thinking, good night. So that's going to be burnt up. Um, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, a prophet this mean nothing look how far i mean this says that if you, you can give everything you have for the good of the church but god says you did it for the wrong motive if you don't do it here this word charity is love if you don't do it for that and we i put ananas and sapphira in there remember that story can you imagine selling your house? I mean, let's say your house is worth $150, whatever, and 75 of those $1,000 you give to the church, that's a lot of, that's a good piece of coin there. And, and the Lord tells you, zero, you get nothing for that. I mean, well, you'll get something. <laughs> Very good, that was good, and that's about it. Because God says, you'll, and these guys, I, I think they're there as an example, God zapped them both. They both died. At the beginning of the church, Ananias and Sapphira, because they lied. They were trying to impress the church. That's what they were doing. And I remember how many times in the Catholic church you would stick and go into your pocket and you pull a bunch of change and you would go, and it just sounds good on the, on the basket that they were passing around. There was probably 67 cents in there. But it sounded really good, you know, you know? And sometimes more magnanimous, you know, later on when you could have a few more bucks, maybe a couple of dollars. Wow, you know. Dad, there's none of that's going to show up in heaven, none of it, besides I was unsaved. But this is what he's saying here. Watch it, be careful. And Paul tells us this is really the motive that you got to have. For the love of Christ constrains us. Because we thus judge that if one died for all, then all were dead. We owe, we owe everything we have to God. We, he, died, we're, he died for us. So it's only rightful that everything we do, so we do it for that. We do it for the love of Christ. That's what Paul says. Therefore, 
when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. And you know how many times you can think of that being done. People that do that for the wrong reason. Therefore, he tells us, don't do that. And are, again, keep in mind, folks, he's talking to his disciples. He's talking to, you know, for the longest time, I, I, like I said, I, I used to teach this, the book of Matthew, as, well, you know, this is really, we're under grace. We're not under the law. This is for them. This is for the disciples at the time, because he was pointing out um, the Pharisees. But that they may have glory if, if, if this if this starts coming at us. Because how many times, this is why this is so difficult. And I think that that's why God warns us. He says, it's going to be a very fine line. You're going to have to discern why you're doing You're going to have to check yourself always. Why are you doing this? Why are you, because if you're doing it for the wrong motive, you're going to lose out. Anybody have a, a so, so far, anybody want to share something or a comment, a comment or a question that you might have? They have their reward, it says. That, if that's what you're looking for, okay? Let your life, now look at this. Look what happens here. Be cautious because look, in Matthew 5, 16, we read this verse already. It says, let your light so shine before men that they might see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So wait a minute. That's going to be a fine line. How are men supposed to see your good works and at the same time do your good works so that you don't do it for the wrong reason? <laughs> huh? Lord, this is tricky. He says, yes. This is why that cautious is there, folks. This is your good works. People are supposed to see your good works and glorify your Father. See what I'm saying? And the more you think about this, it says, good night. Because what's going to happen, see, I, I read some history. I've read history. I have a degree in history, so I've read history. And so that's why I keep going back to the monks of the 13th century and so on, because they... They thought to do that, to get away from the world or the works of the world, you go into a monastery, you know? You hide away in a monastery. This way nobody sees what you're doing. But then nobody's going to see what you're doing. And God wants, you to, God wants people to see your good works so he can get glory. So either you go that route or the other side. <coughs> Desire to be seen of men. It's a fine balance. So which one are you going to do? Because this is what it says. Attracting attention to oneself, not attracting attention to oneself. It seems like a contradictory thing here. So that's what God is saying. I want glory from your good works, but I don't want you to get glory from your good works. Whoa, how am I, how am I going to do that? Well, God says you're going to have to be very careful. You're going to have to check yourself. And Paul tells us that you've got to constantly check yourself. But when thou doest thine alms, doest alms, do not let thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thine alms may be in secret, and thy Father, which is seeth in secret, himself shall reward thee openly. Isn't that amazing? God says... He's in secret because we can't see him. And he will reward you. I mean, it's coming. Can you imagine? It's coming up. In, I mean, the Bible tells us that. I mean, with the parable, he says, Thou good and faithful servant. Remember that? When he gave uh, 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 talents to one, he gave one. To one, he gave two. To one, he gave five, and so on. And then when he, got to his, his, when he, when he collected from them, he says, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. So he tells us things like that. But I believe that even now you can reap benefits. Of course, now you can reap benefits now too. You can reap benefits now. But the main ones are coming up ahead. That's your treasure is 
Now that's what we're going to get up. We're going to get into that in the second part of the of this uh, of this chapter. We're going to get into the you can love you cannot love mammon and God at the same time, and also don't take worry for you can't even change one black hair to white or white to black. So he's, we're going to get into that. <clears throat> so here you have that thine arms may be in secret, concealed. Nobody sees them. So the thing is to please God or to please self. This is what it gets down to, the, um, down to that fine balance. You're doing it to please God and not to please self. And if you, if you don't, because th- I've seen that in myself. I, if I'll do a thing, you, you can catch yourself saying, you know, I'm pretty good. You know, I just gave that guy, look at all the money I gave him, you know? And you walk away feeling kind of good. Wait a minute, what are you doing? That spirit in there, that's the one that the God is pointing out. Um, <coughs> you're, look at this. Thy father and, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall, shall reward thee openly. For they... And this, and this, John tells us this, for they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. And it boils down to this. Again, because God is invisible, we don't see his smile and saying, you know, approving what we just did. But we see people approving, so we kind of go with people. And God says, that's wrong. Yes, sir. Like, I always heard, you know, like, if you can't make yourself happy, how can you make others happy? <clears throat> You know, so like if if you're not you're pleasing yourself, mm-hmm. you please God. You yeah, you know? see, but that's tricky because self gets in there, self, and we we get back to the fact, you know, the 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 sin, the sinners. We talked about that. that there's sin in us. It's not the sins we commit. I'm talking about sin, capital S. It's just living in us. That power. That power gets into every nook and cranny of your life, yourself, even into the very path. Well, look at this. Uh, we'll get we'll get in another uh, thing here, and maybe we'll we'll get back to that. Um, do you want reward from men or from God? This is the thing. Uh, look at this, because that's men. His their praise is how long do they last? You know, like when I did that really fantastic work for the Express News and the publisher, the top man, wrote a note on that page, on the paper, with, with red ink, da, 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 and left it on my desk. And I says, good night, oh, I came in, I walked around the office, checked this out, kill Patrick. <laughs> this, and people says, Phil, you have, you have guaranteed you won't be fired for the next three weeks. <laughs> I said, wow, that's short-lived, man, no matter how good you do. But that's it. And now look at God. If you please God, look at this. Look what Daniel says. And, that, and they that be wise shall shine as the, as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever ever. And I've often taught that. I says, you want to know the rewards that are coming? I think this has something to do with that. Because in heaven, you might have a shine. You know, I don't know. You know, because again, you start getting into, are we going to be envious in heaven? I, you know, all I know is sin is not going to be there. So, so this is what... Uh, um, <coughs> How can you believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? We're taught that. And we know this because he's watching. He's, God is constantly watching, always watching us. Everything is being recorded. Everything. The books will be open. You know, so we know that everything is being recorded. And... 
His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. That's, uh, that's the parable I was just mentioning for him. <clears throat> so we know, knowing that, that we're always in his, in his presence. I tell you, this is why this sermon is so fantastic. It is very high up there. Now, and when thou prayest, so now we're getting into the second part. And I'm probably, um, I hate to get into, into the other part because it's going to start, we're going to be getting into the, um, uh, the Father's Prayer. You know, we're going to be getting into that and I want to spend, uh, um, so we'll, we'll go a little bit more on this. And when thou prayest, thou shall not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. So now you, we just did, we saw alms and the principle there is don't do your alms before men to be seen of them. And if that's the purpose, you want to be seen of them. I mean, they, God wants you to, for them to see your good works. Yes, sir. So one of the things that I think about this too is it's, you should also think about the people that you're trying to influence to want to know God more. So the people that are genuine and just help people of their own volition and forgive people and act a certain way, people are more apt to see that and react to that versus people who maybe once a year go help and they wear a t-shirt that says I'm helping it's, they're not gonna they're not people are not gonna react to that they're gonna react to the genuineness yes of people. yes and I think that's one of the reasons God wants to teach us that if you're gonna reach the lost you know that's the way you do it it's got to be a way of life yeah. it's natural it's just a natural thing you're not taking uh, <coughs> notes like uh, this, that, I did this, I, and that's why I, 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 I witness to a lot of people and I lose track of who I witness to. And I normally don't say I just witnessed to five people today or two people or I haven't witnessed to somebody for three days or whatever, which may, gets me down. But that kind of, that's not good, I think. Because before you know it, you're, you're patting yourself in the back. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Well, I mean, to build on that, I think ultimately exercising humility with almost everything that you do is going to help you keep the right attitude. And people like the genuineness, people will see that and they'll be, you know, if you're humble about, if you take a humble approach to everything that you do as far as prayer or giving or anything like that, or the way you serve or help, you volunteer for things, people are going to see that and it's also if you are humble you're obviously going to have the right mindset and the right um, attitude as far as how you approach it yeah that's the and that's and, and that's what the lord says in micah 6 8 what does the lord require of the old man but to love mercy to love to do just to, to do just to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy god i mean that's the whole piece there the whole gate but that's the, that's the key, humility, to walk humbly. Always just, you know, everything you do, we're his workmanship. That's what the Bible says. We were created unto good works. And, and whatever, for example, this class, this, this is an opportunity for you. I don't know for how long I'll be doing it. You know, when the Lord says, decides it's time to come home. Uh, hope is for many years, and I'll get to teach the book of Habakkuk, you know. That'll be down the road, folks, a while, because we need to cover a lot of other books. But who knows? I mean, it would be a great thing, but that's his doing. I mean, the fact that he's afforded me this opportunity, it's an awesome thing. I never thought it. When I came here in 2012, I asked Brother Bess, I said, Brother Bess, I can teach his children if you don't have a teacher. He says, oh, we just lost the teacher. I says, isn't that fantastic? I came here when they just lost a teacher. Oh, Miss <laughs> Jones class. That was Miss Jones class. And her name was still on the, t it says, no, 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 don't take the name off. Leave it there. Let's call it Miss Jones class. Well, I, you know, and that's, I took the little people, the, the little people. So that was my class. And then he moved me to the teenagers. And then finally, 
the pastor that was teaching this class, he left. There was a pastor. Brother Best had a pastor teaching this class, and then he left. Brother Best says, why don't you take that class? He says, well, I'd rather be teaching this other class, but whatever, you know? And so everything is just going along, and I'm thinking, isn't that crazy? And so you just do what, what's there. Um, and never th start thinking that, oh, well, look at me. No, don't go there, because, I mean, it's God. The whole time it is God. And that's, but that's what you, you got to be, humility is the best thing, brother. You point out that out. That's. Um, so this is the thing. Be careful not to want to be seen. Thou shall be as a hypocrite. Now we're looking at, we started off looking at these people, that they may be seen of God. The same principle he started with alms. And we start thinking, well, these, this, when we read this, he says, well, he's talking about these guys, the Pharisees and the scribes. That's what he's talking about. I mean, because they were hypocrites. I mean, they knew the law. And God says, don't be as they are. But then, don't miss the point. Don't miss, we must not miss the point. The, the, we don't want to lose track of, because this, this is talking to the disciples. That means he's talking to us ourselves that in the very prayer because we're going to be dealing with this next week we're going to be getting into the father's prayer in the very prayer and this is how far high i mean this is the highest point here on earth contact with god when you go to prayer i mean this you would think this would be the last place that sin would be found when you get into your closet to pray to god this, I mean, this, this is the best you can do. This is, you're going to God. But in that very place, this can happen. There can be spots. And you can start thinking, you know, I'm a pretty good guy. Look at here. I've been sitting, I've been praying here for this long. Or I, look at me, I'm praying for so-and-so. It's very insidious how that thing gets in there. See what I mean? It can get right into your, and we're going to be getting into not to do vain repetitious, which is another thing. But this thing, now, we can say, now that's sin. We can point our drunken bum out in the street and we say, that is sin. That's easy. But how about this? In the very church, in the very place where you've, you're doing prayer, this is, this is amazing, folks, that sin can get in there. Very subtle. And can say, look at me. I've been sitting here praying to God and, and all of a sudden you're praising yourself and you feel pretty good about yourself because it's self. Self is the one that gets in the way. And this is what God is pointing out. This is why he tells us to be cautious. Be very careful of your works, even your prayer life. It can get to where you're doing this. Notice that these love these people love standing and also the corners of the streets that's where people are at why there why get to that place because they love to be seen and and um so we got to be careful whenever we're asked to pray here in church or so on um it's it's an honor to do that to lead a whole congregation to the to the throne of grace but be careful that those prayers not get you into self-praising or self-pleasing or that's what the warning is here. Does anybody have a comment? Or... Yes, sir? Well, uh, you know, um, there's a, I have mixed feelings about praying in public, you know, with, with, with you know, you're sitting down and you get in a restaurant or something and everybody was like, most of everybody's a Christian that you're with and and they want to pray and then you're like we're not supposed to pray in public and then you're like well okay keep it be, be humble keep it to yourself and then you're like you, you still don't know if that's okay with, you know yeah and, and, and last night we prayed at uh, 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 there Miss Rose bought tickets for a bunch of us guys to go a bunch of people to go see the, that that planned movie, unplanned movie. And when we came out, we were there in the lobby discussing it. 
And, and, I, and you know, I've been doing this study, and I'm thinking, I want to ask to pray, but this is so public. The same thing. I says, oh, I, the Lord knows why I want to do it. Let's do it anyway. So we did it. We prayed right there in, in public. And yes, Ms. Rose. Well, I, was, I wanted you to finish speaking. I just didn't raise my hand, so I thought we were done. Okay. Are you done? Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> 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 no, 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 I, I was done. Oh, I was just going to say, I really feel, and I mean, I feel like it's obvious, but, um, you know, our intentions, you know, like, I feel like that's what it really comes down to. And, you know, going back to humility, like, that's something that the Lord's really been working on. <clears throat> will probably continue to work on for the rest of my life. But it's been, like, in the last, I don't know, maybe six months that, you know, God is just trying to get me to the point where it's like, Everything I do, like I'm doing it for him. Like, stop worrying about what people think. Yes. You know, because you're living to please the Lord. You know, like yes. even in church, do you know what I'm saying? It's like, why do you do what you do? You know, it's for the Lord. And so, anyway, humility, it comes from the Spirit. It is yes. Not yes. Spirit. You cannot make yourself humble. You yes. Pretend to be humble. You can say, oh, I'm humble. <laughs> you know, but really, it comes from the Spirit. And it is a daily thing that we need to pray for is, you know, spirit, you know, fill me with humility because it doesn't come from ourselves. It's right. Just, it just can't, we can't be humble. Yes, it's, it's, because I mean, you can get a plaque for being humble. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do with a plaque? You want to hide it, but actually, look what I got. Oh, that just destroyed everything. So, somebody else had a hand? Yes, ma'am. You know, when you go through all these hardships, you know, with God, and then you see how he has brought you through them, you have that attitude, and you automatically, I'll do the praying if nobody wants to do it, you know. You all automatically want to give him that gratitude. Yes. Because he, he has, you know, helped you through those hard times. Yes. Yeah, we got to constantly point back at him. Miss Adrian? Uh, you need to pray in public as a group because it's a good testimony before the unsaved world. Mm -hmm. And it also gives other Christians to see you do this. Boldness. A boldness. Boldness, to do it yes. Themselves. Yes. And, and, and of course, to know that he's watching us, he's there in our presence. And, and, and the thing is, um, look at this. Okay, these instructions are to Christians, we, to Christian people. We got to be cautious. So now look at this. Last 2016, I was in, in Jerusalem. That's one of the streets in Jerusalem. Uh, as, 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 as narrow as these streets are, they have vans every once in a while passing through there with speakers, uh, loudspeakers, and they're, because th th this is the, there's, this is uh, Islamic, you know, and they, they have the prayers, the prayers, being bombasted out and they're loud and obnoxious but the prayers are coming the, the van I mean if you're talking to somebody right there on the street you can't because it's loud it's, oh good grief and it passes and the guy that's driving it he's angry I don't know why he's angry but but look at this and even here they see that tower it's got speakers they, they, the prayers are very public. And I'm just, God's not going to hear that. This is all for show. Uh, so my question is this. Uh, but when you, I'll do is I prayers, pray to the Father which is in secret. And he will reward you openly. Um, that's what keeps coming up. He's concealed. So the question is, should prayers be beautiful? We're, we're going to close with this. We need to. And that, I mean, there's, I know there's a pastor that sells these CDs because he makes very long prayers. And they're very articulate, very well-worded, big $25 words, you know what I mean? It's just, uh, wow. And he says he's got those CDs for sale. I'm thinking, why would I want one? When I talk to my father, I want to 
I want to be real. I don't want to use somebody else's prayer. I says, Lord, I remember one time I, I telling him, I says, Lord, have you ever felt like this? He says, oh, yeah. <coughs> yeah. I felt like he told me that. He says, yeah, they do that to me all the time. I thought, wow. Yes, sir, back then, the back. Okay, this man. That's like the Pharisee on the street corner praying out loud. Yes. Same thing. Yes. You know, prayer should be pretty much just what oh. you got to say to Father, to the Father. From to, the heart. To, he's, he's yeah, that's what he wants. The prayers so that everybody will see how great he is. Yes. And so we're going to, this prepares us for next week. Okay, let us pray. Lord God, thank you for being so good to us, Lord. You are so good to us, oh Lord. And um, we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. And we love you, Lord. In your son's name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.